Hey guys, it's V. So I'm back for another TTC update. The last time I was on here, I was waiting for the results of a blood test. I was waiting for AMH results. I was waiting to get rescheduled for an HSG. I was waiting for um, another ultrasound to see where my cysts were at. So I was waiting for all kinds of things. So I have an update on all of that. The, let's see, where do I start? Start at the beginning. The first thing that came back um, since my last video was the blood test results. And the good news is my AMH is great. It's fine. Um, it is 3.1. So they are happy with that. And the other thing that that tells them is um, it also doesn't show any signs of PCOS because normally when you have PCOS your AMH is or can be pretty darn high um, which isn't a good thing either you don't want it high you don't want it low so um, not only are the blood tests for my hormone levels showing that I am PCOS free the AMH is also showing that I'm PCOS free so it sounds like the uh, RE was right so that's good. The other stuff in that blood test, I was I was really concerned that something would come back abnormal. The other thing they were testing for was because I have the cyst or cysts. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, they're they were testing for something called CA125. I have no idea what that stands for, but essentially, if you have cysts they test for this level and if it's above the normal accepted range then that could mean that they're cancerous. Thankfully mine is not. Um, my, my level is perfectly normal and so they're not worried about that. So that's a good thing. And the other thing they were testing for was thyroid. Now in the past I was on Synthroid for a very short amount of time. Um, I'm not on it now. So I wasn't quite sure what they were going to come up with with that. But I guess uh, normal for the thyroid level is up to 5. Whatever that unit is, it's up to 5 is good. And mine is 3.7, so that's also good. The only thing that was slightly out of range was my prolactin. I don't know a lot about prolactin. Actually, I don't know anything about prolactin. If any of you do, if you could message me below. Um, they said it's just a touch high. I guess it's supposed to be up to 25. Again, whatever that unit is. Mine was 27.2. They didn't sound too worried, and they actually want me to do another blood draw tomorrow. A fasting blood draw, just to verify it. So that was really the only thing that was slightly abnormal. So all of that was great. Um, I went, I did go back for an ultrasound to test the cyst only to be told that I misunderstood and I actually had two cysts one on the left and one on the right so they were looking at both of those and the good news is they did shrink they, they shrinked a decent amount but they're still there and they're still quite noticeable um, and the bad news is there's now three of them two on the right and one on the left one for each month that hasn't worked, <laughs> or that I haven't ovulated properly. So uh, my body's trying to do what it's supposed to be doing, you know, one side one month, the other side the next month, but um, the RE firmly believes now that my body thinks I'm ovulating, but my eggs really and truly are not releasing. So that is officially the issue on my side. Um, hopefully, as we go through this process, they won't find any more issues. So, <laughs> um, while I'm there for that ultrasound, because they shrunk a little bit on their own, they're not too worried about them. They think they're going to shrink the rest of the way. So, they haven't mentioned the S word, that being surgery. So I, I'm not worried about that anymore, um, so far, so far. But while I was there, while I was there, um, they kind of 
threw a bunch of stuff at me, which which is good, which is good. But it's, I mean, we're we're, we're about to start the roller coaster here, people. <laughs> um, so we, we we need to jump a bunch of hurdles, but we're, we're we're getting there. The bottom line is, while I was there, he uh, he said, "Well, here's what I want you to do. Call me on cycle day one." And if your cycle day one is late, like it has been the last three months, don't wait longer than seven days. Um, if it's seven days late, call me at that point. But call me on cycle day one. Hopefully it comes when it's supposed to. And we're going to do another ultrasound. We're going to do another blood test to test that prolactin. And then we're going to schedule the HSG. So cycle day one was yesterday. And... The crazy part is it was three days early. That hasn't happened in a very long time. So I, I was kind of happy with that. It was it was it was quasi on time. <laughs> um, and oh, the other thing I forgot was when they did that blood test for the AMH and the thyroid and all that stuff, they showed levels that proved that I had ovulated. Now, again, my body thinks I'm ovulating, the hormones are all there to say I'm ovulating, but the eggs really and truly aren't releasing. They're turning into cysts. Well, um, of course, you know, the RE tried to stay hopeful in saying uh, that I did ovulate. Um, and I actually did get a positive OPK for the first time in three months since that craziness with the clomid and the estrogen. Um, but it was on cycle day 11. I have never, ever, ever ovulated that early. Um, but I had six sessions of acupuncture. So that could have helped. I don't know. So they were trying to remain positive and said, well, hey, you know, you never know. You could have gotten pregnant. Da, 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 da. You know, if cycle day one doesn't come. Make sure you test before you call us. Yeah, that, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> so cycle day one was yesterday. I did call. I am scheduled to go in tomorrow for the fasting test to verify the prolactin in the blood. Um, I am also scheduled for an ultrasound to look at the cysts, but it's also going to be used as a baseline scan for the beginning of what is about to ensue. Um, the HSG is finally scheduled for next Thursday. And when I go in tomorrow, they are probably going to give me a script for birth control. He wants me to be on birth control for two or three weeks and hopefully they will it will sh shrink the cysts the rest of the way. Now, I, you know what? I don't know a lot about that. I know that when you're on birth control, it can help with the cysts. It can get rid of them entirely. That would be great. I'm no doctor, but I'm a little concerned. Um, you know, the cysts have been there for a couple of months now. They are shrinking on their own. I'm having a hard time believing that just the birth control can shrink them the rest of the way in a mere three weeks. I don't know. So I, my fingers are crossed on that one because that is the final hurdle I'm not really worried about the HSG. I don't think anything's wrong with my tubes. I really don't. Um, so really the final hurdle is getting the cysts to shrink the rest of the way with the birth control because as some of you that have been through this before are probably guessing by now, that's also the start of an IVF cycle. <laughs> that's right. He wants to throw us straight into IVF and overlap the last few days of birth control with Lupron and away we go. So... <laughs> Of course, I asked, I said, how did you get the insurance to be okay with this? We haven't done IUIs, we haven't done ITIs, we haven't done any of that. And again, he says, I don't care. None of that's going to work for you guys. I don't want to waste any more time um, between what you've got going on with your eggs not releasing properly and your husband has going on, which I explained in my last video. I won't get into that. If you don't remember, go check it out. Um, I'll link it below. Between those two things, they were like, we know what we're doing. We're going to write the write the insurance company a letter, and it will be fine. Between those two things, they'll approve whatever we want. All right, then. <laughs> That's fine with me. Um, I, you know, I think I, I, I'm kind of ecstatic that we kind of get pushed ahead of this process with the IVF. But at the same time, I am a little worried. I know that if you do IUIs with injectables, they at least get a sense of how your body reacts to that stuff. They're going in as blind with me. <laughs> so um, hopefully they know what they're doing. 
I think that's really my only concern, or my only two concerns. Will the cysts shrink, and will they get the meds right on the first shots? <laughs> so we'll see. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if anybody had any input on this, because I thought it was a little bit weird. When I went for that last ultrasound that showed the three cysts, he asked me again what all of my supplements were, even though I had listed them all out and they were all in his files and whatnot. I guess he wanted to make sure that uh, nothing had changed. And I was taking, I'm trying to remember how many milligrams, I think it was 600 milligrams, either 400 or 600 milligrams daily of CoQ10, um, which I believe is good for your eggs, if I remember correctly. There's so many supplements, I can't remember what all of them are good for anymore. But... Um, he wanted me off of it. He wanted me to stop taking the CoQ10. I have no idea why. I didn't question it. I said, okay, fine. There was so much information he was throwing at me that day that I, I, it honestly slipped my mind to ask him what the reasoning behind that was. So anyhow, I stopped that last week. If anybody has any input on that, let me know. But this is it, folks. <laughs> if the cysts shrink, we're going straight into an IVF cycle. Um, I would assume the injections would start middle of February-ish, maybe a little sooner, depending on what happens with the birth control. So, I'm going tomorrow. They should be giving me a script for that. And they'll be doing the ultrasound, and they'll be doing the, the blood test. I don't know if there's anything else they need to throw into my repertoire if the prolactin is still slightly abnormal. But I can't imagine that's going to be that big of a deal. That's my update. <laughs> um, I'm happy, as you can see. I am happy. I'm happy that we get to try. We get to move forward. We have all of our answers. Hopefully all of our answers. Hopefully they, they won't find anything else. I know there's other things they can find through the process of IVF. Hopefully there won't be anything else. Um, two problems is enough for me. <laughs> for me and my husband, I should say. So, the next time I have some more news, or when the cysts are gone, whichever one comes first, I will get back on here and update you guys. For now, I will talk to you guys later. Oh, oh, while I'm on here, I wanted to congratulate all of those awesome mommies out there. You know, I started with YouTube... March of 2013, somewhere in there, and uh, all the people that I started watching at the very beginning that did get pregnant all just had their adorable little bundles, so that was awesome. Um, congratulations to all of you, Crystal, Mickey, Steffi, off the top of my head, um, and I know a bunch of you are heading to IVF right along the same time hopefully I will be. Maybe we can be a bump mates. That would be awesome. Um, and I'm just going to put a shout out here to uh, Beth, who I know is going to have her transfer soon. Good luck to you. And to the rest of you who are still trying, don't give up hope. This is our year. We're going to make this happen. Talk to you later. Bye.